Okay, so this is an extremely annoying biochemistry question for step one. Very high yield. It's on the NBME exams. Students get it wrong, so this will get you a point here. I'm not just arbitrarily conceiving that this should be tested. It's on the NBME exams, okay? So 22-year-old dude, he's been fasting for 24 hours, and he has normoglycemia, normal serum glucose at 98 milligrams per deciliter. Normal range is 72 to 99. Milligrams per deciliter, impaired fasting glucose or prediabetes is 100 to 125 milligrams per deciliter, and then two readings of 126 or greater uh, would be diabetes mellitus. Okay, so we have to think about how he's able to maintain normal serum glucose levels with fasting. So for the first 12 to 18 hours, the primary source of glucose will be glycogen. So glycogenolysis, breaking down glycogen. Uh, that's the first 12 to 18-ish hours, okay? There's no strict number you need to memorize. Just in general, you should be aware that within the first day, you're going to be running through your glycogen sources. You're not going to be using glycogen three days into fasting, okay? That's the main point. So I don't want to get too tangential. There's a lot we can talk about, make this a 90-minute biochemistry lecture, but with regard to glycogenolysis, I want you to know that glycogen phosphorylase is an important enzyme for breaking down glycogen, and it's phosphorylated and active in the fasting state. Sounds pedantic, sounds low yield. It's on the USMLE, it's karmic, so I want you to know that. Glycogen phosphorylase in the fasting state is phosphorylated, the enzyme is phosphorylated, and it's active, okay? Now, after we run through our glycogen, we are going to venture into gluconeogenesis territory, where we are producing glucose from non-glucose sources, including no longer producing from glycogen. The f in humans, the four main sources for gluconeogenesis are going to be lactate, pyruvate, alanine, and glutamine, okay? A lot we can talk about. I'm going to try to stay simple here. Lactate via lactate dehydrogenase can be converted to pyruvate. Okay, that's a that's an uh, that that is a reversible enzyme. It's called the Cori cycle, where muscles are going to be producing lactate ultimately from their glucose. So glucose will go to pyruvate uh, through glycolysis. Pyruvate is converted to lactate, and then lactate will go to the liver, where lactate is converted to pyruvate and then pyruvate will go back to glucose. Now, I should be clear here, and this can get very fucking confusing very fucking fast, okay? We can't go directly from pyruvate back to glucose because we have all these irreversible, we have three irreversible enzymes in glycolysis. So pyruvate is first, in order to go back to glucose, pyruvate is converted to oxaloacetate via pyruvate carboxylase and vitamin B7, which is biotin. And oxaloacetate, and, and also acetyl-CoA is a positive allosteric regulator of pyruvate carboxylase, okay? So pyruvate will go to oxaloacetate in the TCA cycle. Oxaloacetate will go backwards to PEP, which is phosphoenolpyruvate, via phosphoenolpyruvate carboxykinase. That, because you can't go directly from pyruvate back to PEP, because that last enzyme in glycolysis, pyruvate, pyruvate kinase, is irreversible. So we have to go from pyruvate to oxaloacetate and then to PEP. And then PEP can make its way back to glucose. So I mention this because you should think of it as sort of synonymous that if we can, as long as we can get to pyruvate, insofar as we can create pyruvate, we can get backwards to glucose via the pyruvate carboxylase pathway initially. So lactate, we said, can go to pyruvate. And then I also mentioned glycerol. So glycerol, monoacylglycerol liberated from triglycerides, which will, so triglycerides, we've broken down into three fatty acids and a monoacylglycerol. Fatty acids cannot be made into glucose, but monoacylglycerol via uh, glycerol kinase can be made into glycerol 3-phosphate glycerol 3-phosphate into dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which can make its way back to glucose, okay? You don't need to know glycerol kinase and that little side pathway. You should just be aware that 
when we're breaking down triglycerides, when glycerol is liberated, that that just in isolation, that can make its way back to glucose, okay? Glycerol is a gluconeogenic substrate, okay? Same as pyruvate. And then when we talk about amino acids, most of our amino acids are actually what are called glucogenic amino acids, which means they can be made into pyruvate. Now, we have various amino acids that uh, are not able to, or I should not various, two, which would be lysine and leucine, are called strict ketogenic amino acids. They can only be made into acetyl-CoA, okay? They cannot make their way to pyruvate. Those are strict ketogenic amino acids, just two of them, which means most of our amino acids are glucogenic in some form, okay? Some amino acids are shared. They are ketogenic and they're glucogenic. You don't need to stress about memorizing uh, too heavily all of the amino acids and whether they're ketogenic or glucogenic. That's not worth your time. I think you could be aware, kind of on the back burner, that lysine and leucine are your strict ketogenic. And then when we talk about gluconeogenesis, um, apart from lactate and glycerol, that alanine and glutamine are your two major glucogenic amino acids, okay? So um, I mention this because alanine is our answer here. This can become pyruvate. It's a glucogenic amino acid. And so this is via the hepatic enzyme ALT, alanine transaminase, uh, and vitamin B6. Okay, so we have alanine plus alpha ketoglutarate. We'll go to uh, pyruvate plus glutamate. Okay, that's how we get pyruvate out of it. That is that is an important equilibrium for various amino acids. Okay, we have this shuttle with glutamate and alpha ketoglutarate, but I'm just telling you. That's how you get from, because you've heard of the hepatic enzymes, ALT, AST, right? So ALT, that's what that enzyme is actually doing, is it's converting uh, alanine over into pyruvate. Now, trying to stay concise here, acetyl-CoA is wrong, because choice B, because acetyl-CoA is actually the building block for ketone bodies. So two acetyl-CoAs are going to come together, they're going to coalesce to form acetoacetyl-CoA, which will become acetoacetate. So choice A and B are wrong. These are precursors to ketone bodies. And beta-hydroxybutyrate, that's a common ketone body. You'll see that actually on step one NBMEs. They might give you a DKA question and then have an arrow, various arrows, and beta-hydroxybutyrate is an up arrow. That's just a ketone body. Okay, that makes sense. So um, we said acetyl-CoA not only is that uh, the building block for ketones, but this is also what our ketogenic amino acids, as I said, leucine and lysine are going to be converted into, uh, so they can only be made into ketones, whereas alanine um, can be made into, alanine and valine can actually both be made into pyruvate, but valine's wrong because, as I just said before, our four primary sources of uh, gluconeogenic are our four main gluconeogenic precursors in humans uh, being lactate, glycerol, alanine, and glutamine. So whilst valine, yes, uh, can be made into pyruvate and is glucogenic, it's not the primary source. This is a hard question for that reason, okay? So there are some questions that are very like, very easy and clear cut. There will be other questions that will get you a 260 on step one, okay? So that, that's why you could say this is a little pedantic, but this is this is on the NBMEs for step one. It's not my opinion. This is what's actually tested. So I'm telling you what's fucking tested. Linoleic acid is, a, is an essential fatty acid. So linoleic and linolenic acids are two essential fatty acids. Linolenic acid being... Um, an omega-3, linoleic being an omega-6 fatty acid. You don't need to know that. I'm just telling you, because you'll see sometimes distractors and you're like, hmm, what's that? But linoleic and linolenic acids, they're 18 carbon fatty acids and they're, they're essential fatty acids, meaning that you need to consume them. We can't synthesize them. They're in lots of sources, okay? So uh, seeds in particular, like pumpkin seeds, sunflower seeds, nuts, um, 
Okay, so you can get your fatty your essential fatty acids there. Stearic acid is an 18 carbon saturated fat. Okay, a saturated fatty acid. So um, I'm just telling you what it is. It's a distractor. You don't need to know it specifically, but it might you might see it as an answer choice for. In fact, you will see it as an answer choice on step one NBMEs, but it's wrong. Okay, I'm just telling you it's a it's a saturated fatty acid. Okay, so this conversation, as far as all of the biochemistry, as I mentioned before, can get very fucking confusing, very fucking fast, and there's a lot we can talk about. But I just want you to take home from this question that gluconeogenesis, it, we are going to be producing glucose. After we deplete glycogen 12 to 18 hours, gluconeogenesis, uh, when you've been fasting for 24 hours and greater, it's 18 to 24 hours and greater, uh, primarily your lactate, glycerol, uh, alanine, and glutamine, okay? These are your primary sources, and that ultimately, when we make uh, pyruvate via amino acids, uh, that can go back to glucose, okay? I'll make other questions that kind of tie in some factoids for you, making sure you uh, learn the info you need in the least amount of time and aggravation, all right? So if you liked this question, subscribe to my channel, and I appreciate your time. That's it.